Right. Good morning, and thank you so much for joining us for this webinar on our Early Education Empowerment Zone Child Care Expansion Grants. My name is Laura Wagner, and I serve as the E3Z Director here at DECAL. I am very pleased to be joined by um, colleagues from the Department of Community Affairs as well this morning. Um, we have Rusty Haygood with us, as well as Anna Hensley, uh, who will be joining us in conversation about the application itself. This morning, just to get us started, I wanted to give a little bit of context on the Early Learning Challenge Grant by which we are funded for this exciting expansion grant project, um, and also wanted to share a little bit more about our early education empowerment zones themselves, and lastly give a brief overview on the goals of these expansion grants. So thank you again for joining us, and thank you again for your, for your patience with us this morning. So to begin, in late 2013, Georgia won um, in a round of the Race to the Top Early Learning Challenge Grant application, uh, we actually won $51.7 million. We actually won the largest um, monetary amount um, that round of the Early Learning Challenge Grant, um, and we were so excited and um, really excited to build upon and strengthen our early learning and development system here in Georgia. So as Georgia applied, we were required to detail how we would improve program quality and outcomes for young children, how we would increase the number of children with high needs attending high quality early learning and development programs, so how we would address the question of access for children with um, high needs in particular, and also how we would help to close the achievement gap between children with high needs and their peers by supporting efforts to increase kindergarten readiness. So we were funded for 12 individual projects, and one of these projects, Project 2, is the Early Education Empowerment Zone. So our purpose for this project is to align the support activities and services in geographic areas with large numbers or high percentages of children with high needs and, and improve infrastructure for high quality early learning programs. To achieve this purpose, we uh, proposed that we would offer increased incentives for offering and selecting high quality early learning environments. So we said that there would be an incentive for programs to offer high quality care as well as for families to select that high quality. And also, we said that we would work with community leaders to improve early childhood infrastructure and increase economic opportunities. I'm pleased to say in each of our four E3Zs, we have gotten a lot of really wonderful um, community leadership and community support for our um, E3Z work, and for that we are incredibly grateful. Our four E3Zs throughout Georgia were selected based on data that indicated areas that had uh, populations of children with high needs who were underserved. And some of the quantitative measures that we looked at were education of young children, uh, particularly third grade, uh, CRCT reading scores, um, child poverty levels, child care capacity in particular, uh, child care quality, and family characteristics. We also had to take a look at the community capacity in each potential zone um, and community willingness to devote resources towards delivering services which would help to reduce the achievement gap. So based on the selection process, four early education empowerment zones were selected. We are working in a cluster of five counties in North Georgia, including Catoosa, Murray, Whitfield, Gilmer, and Gordon counties. We are in Clark County. We are in Bibb County. And we are in a cluster of five counties in South Georgia, including Colquitt, Cook, Brooks, Lowndes, and Eccles County. 
each of the E3Zs through the Early Learning Challenge Grant will receive strate strategic um, programming and initiatives, including home visiting services through Great Start Georgia, quality improvement grants for early care and education providers through our quality rated system, enhanced child care subsidy payments for families through our um, tiered family copay, family engagement grants through working with our Family Connection Collaborative Partners, Specialized Professional Development for Early Care and Education Professionals, Comprehensive Assessment and Referral Services, and lastly, Economic Development Incentives to attract high quality early care and education providers. And this last bullet point is exactly what we are addressing here with our E3Z Child Care Expansion Grant. In our grant proposal, we said the following. We said that we would be working with partners from the Georgia Department of Community Affairs and that the state would devote substantial resources to developing infrastructure in these zones to strengthen their early childhood systems and support children's development and learning. Our E3Zs will be established in areas that have fewer high-quality early learning and development programs to serve children with high needs thereby creating opportunities for families of children with high needs to access high quality early learning and development programs. To give a brief overview, this is a competitive grant process. And these grants are intended to enable the expansion of child care capacity for infants and toddlers specifically in our four early education empowerment zones. The grants themselves will be up to $100,000 of economic development incentives, including salary subsidies and equipment for classrooms. Our ultimate goal is somewhat narrow, as you'll see, tying back to this being a competitive grant process. We intend to fund three child care learning centers in North Georgia, three in South Georgia, two in Clark, and two in Bibbs. Our eligibility is as follows. All three-star quality rated providers in Georgia who intend to open a new child care learning center in an E3Z county or who intend to expand an existing child care learning center within an E3Z county are eligible. Uh, again, this is for child care learning centers um, rather than family child care homes at this time. And these programs are, are eligible within the following counties. Bibb, Brooks, Catoosa, Clark, Colquitt, Cook, Eccles, Gilmer, Gordon, Lowndes, Murray, and Wicks. For more on their eligibility, to be eligible for these funds, a child care program must create at least two net full-time positions that are new. A child care program must also increase the number of infant and toddler spaces by at least 15% over current level slots, whichever is greater. The program must submit quarterly progress reports highlighting the expenditure of funds, project accomplishments, and problems encountered regarding the implementation of the project must agree that the awarded funds will be administered on a reimbursement basis and the total award amount will not be dispersed up front but will require adequate documentation to support the drawdown request. And lastly, ensure that the items for which you are funded are expended consistent with the purpose of the grant. So again, we intend to increase access um, for infants and toddlers within our E3Zs um, by means of these um, child care expansion grants. So with that, uh, I would like to um, welcome our partners with the Department of Community Affairs um, to, to join in on the conversation um, to discuss um, specifically the application process.
Thank you, Laura, and good morning. This is Rusty Haygood with the Department of Community Affairs. Um, I am going to talk very briefly about some of the components of the application process, and we will uh, we'll go from there. To start with, I want to hit on some of the things that you, you may or uh, may not know. These funds are federal dollars that have come through the um, American Recovery Act, and these come with federal requirements as well. It's not as simple as just applying for a grant and getting the money and spending it. There are some federal hoops that we all have to jump through when we deal with the federal dollars. So the good news for you is that we're going to have a team from DECAL and DCA that will be on the ground with you that are helping you navigate these processes to make it far less intimidating and make sure that there are uh, no hiccups. If you will listen to them, if you're a recipient, it's going to make the process so much easier. Um, as Laura said, there are some requirements to create at least two new positions through the process, as well as increase the number of infant and toddler spaces by at least 15% or 10 new slots, whichever is greater. Through this process, you will go through the application document, and I will say that the application documents have gone live this morning. We apologize for the delay, but there were some uh, components that we were trying to work out with uh, the federal requirements, and I think we have gotten those where they need to be. So if you go to the website, dca.ga.gov slash E3Z, you should be able to find the application as well as the application instructions. This application will be due on August 27th. You can either deliver it to DCA's office, 60 Executive Park South in Atlanta, or have it postmarked by close of business that day. As long as it's postmarked by that day or received, it will be uh, considered. For those that do receive a grant, you will receive an app, uh, a recipient's package, excuse me, and within that package, it's going to have some documents that you will need to sign, and these will tell the amount of the award, the uh, conditions of the award, and talk to you about the federal processes that have to be followed in order to go through uh, the, the paperwork on the back side of the grant. If it's awarded, you will uh, receive the funds on a reimbursement basis. This is something that will uh, not be deposited in the, the bank as soon as the award is received. It will instead be uh, drawn down whenever you need the funds. If you expend the funds in a certain uh, eligible activity, then you can request the reimbursement and those will be uh, in turn sent directly to you. Your responsibility is to make sure that you comply with the, the regulations that are, are set forth and purchase the things and spend the funds on what you say that you are going to within the, the grant document. And you must agree to participate in the quality rated uh, system that DECAL has in place. When you are looking at the application document, and it may or may not be readily apparent on the screen that you see right now, but whenever you open it up through the DCA website, you will see that there are gray boxes, and you will see that there are white boxes you are only able to type in the gray boxes. The white boxes are set to automatically populate, and they are tied to other fields within the application. With what you see on the screen right now, there are three tabs at the bottom of the page. One says E3Z application, that's where we are now. One says salary schedule, and one says budget. Each of those has an important role in this process, and all three uh, can be required of you. Anna will be walking through the application very shortly, but I wanted to point out that you do need to pay attention to all three tabs. Whenever you are filling in the application, certain fields, like I said, will not be able to be typed in. There will be an error message if you try to type into those fields, but you need to go through the entire process before looking at the final white fields. Um, that's because we've got certain things that are linked together within the application, and it will uh, show up at the very end all of the things that you need to include, and it, it should be very clear exactly what the expectation is. 
the only other thing that I would tell you, certain fields such as the company legal name there at the top line, uh, that is a field that you will type into. If you go down to uh, line 13, type of facility for which you're seeking grant funding assistance, uh, excuse me, not that one, uh, line 12, early education empowerment zone, that's going to be a drop down menu. If you double click in the boxes, if you see the cursor flashing, that's the field to type into. And if you double click in it and it gives you a drop down menu, select from the drop down menu. So those are the, the basic constructs of the application. And uh, what I will say is, in closing, you must print out the application and send it in. Uh, we do need a, an original signature from the owner, uh, manager of the facility. It is not set up to do an electronic submission. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Anna Hensley, and then we will uh, stick around for after Anna is finished. Good morning. My name is Anna Hensley, and I'm with the Department of Community Affairs. I'm going to be your main point of contact for the E3Z expansion project. Um, so I'm looking forward to working with all of you. As Rusty mentioned, I'm going to be walking you through the application process this morning and showing you some of the ins and outs and what's expected in each field. Um, so as you can see, this first page is general information, contact information, your legal name, your business name could differ from your company legal name, so just be sure to include all the information that's applicable to your business that you're applying for funding for. Um, I'm going to walk you through some of these drop-down menus. As he mentioned, slot 12 is a drop-down menu, and you double-click on that, and that's where you select the E3Z which you are applying, which your facility lies in. So that would be Bibb County, Clark County, North Georgia, which includes Catoosa, Whitfield, Murray, Gordon, and Gilmer, or South Georgia, which includes Colquitt, Cook, Brooks, Lowndes, and Eccles. So for the sake of today, we're going to type in North Georgia. Um, this one is also a drop-down menu, the type of facility for which you're seeking grant assistance, and that's just where you select if it's a nonprofit or a for-profit company. Uh, your license number is the current number for the facility if you're doing an expansion that's issued by the Department of Early Care and Learning. If you are opening a new facility, just put your current business's license, or if you are still applying, you can put applicable. Um, on this drop-down menu with the CAP subsidy, you are required to serve those high-needs children. So on this, you would start to like, hopefully, yes, if you plan to apply for this funding. The person authorized to sign contracts is going to be the one single point of contact. It could be your board chair if that applies or the owner. It's going to be the one person who is signing all of the legal documentation associated with this grant program. So. They'll be signing contracts, reviews, award documents. And that does not necessarily have to be the same person who is the contact person. In this blank, that's where you're going to put the person who is actually doing the application. So when we review, if we have questions, we can reach out to that individual. So be sure to be very thorough in all of the contact information for each of those. Your total project cost is going to be the total cost of the project, not the amount that you're requesting money for. You enter that here. And the total amount here will pre-populate from your answers in the rest of the document. So you can't type in anything there right now. But you be sure once the document is completed to look back at that, make sure it accurately reflects the amount that you are applying for. Once you are completed, or once your application is completed, you will print and have the authorized signature of the individual you listed above here. Form two is the request for equipment funding. There are certain parameters um, around what you can apply for. So these funds may be used for activities that support quality rated standard three child health and physical activities. You can purchase durable materials and equipment, um, such as shelving units, paintbrushes, easels, 
Um, you cannot purchase consumables such as food, paint, paper towels, that type of thing. Um, so those are some of the parameters around what is eligible, what's not eligible regarding equipment. However, like I mentioned, please feel free to reach out to me if you have any specific questions about items and we'll let you know if they're eligible or not. Um, documentation is going to be required for funding, so receipts and proof of purchase prior to reimbursement being issued would be required. And as Rusty mentioned, it is a drawdown process, so it's not going to be an upfront payment for you to go out and purchase. It would be a reimbursement basis. Um, so in these blanks, you would select, if you were applying for equipment funding, you would say yes. The total estimated equipment cost associated with the project has to be accompanied by documentation as well. So um, you could put a quote from a vendor in this blank. Um, and oh, I'm sorry. The total amount of grant funding, you would have to put the documentation with that as well. So this is the total. This is the amount you're requesting. And both of these are working boxes where you would enter those amounts. Um, we are encouraging you to do more with less money. So the most maximiz maximization of funding is encouraged. In this box, the more detail, the better. And that goes for all of the application. The more clarity and detail you can add will result in a higher level of understanding on our end of what you intend to do with the funds. So this is where you're going to detail what you plan to purchase with this grant funding. Um, the detail, as I mentioned, the more the better. Um, include age groups that are going to be using the equipment and how it's going to maximize the children's experience in your facility. This is where you're going to explain why the equipment is necessary to the operation of your facility. If you are purchasing new equipment, explain why it's now necessary. If you're replacing old equipment, please describe the condition of the equipment that you're replacing and why it needs upgrading. Um, and please be very clear and very specific. There is no maximum to the amount of information that you can include, so the more the better. Moving on to the salary subsidy page. Um, there are salary subsidies that are eligible for this expansion grant. Um, you are required to create two net new positions, and that means you subtract the current number of positions at your facility from the number that you intend to have on December 31st, 2017. Um, this form is only required if you plan on using the salary subsidies. Um, so here, this is the drop-down menu where you say yes or no. If you do not, then don't worry about this page. However, for the sake of instruction, we are going to be applying for the salary subsidies today. Um, the number of net new jobs being created at the facility, as I mentioned, is the number that you plan to have additional positions from today's date to December 31st, 2017. Um, full -time, these must be full-time positions at 35 hours a week working with ages birth through three. These subsidies are available to increase the qualification of personnel. So DECAL has um, put together a minimum payment um, required for these subsidies. That is included in the instructions that are paired with the application, so you can refer back to those at any time. But I'll go ahead and mention that um, an individual receiving or who has a CDA or technical certificate is required to be paid at least $9.50 an hour. An associate's degree would be required to be paid $10 an hour and a bachelor's degree would be required to pay, be paid at least $10.50 an hour. And the maximum subsidies for those, the technical certificate would be $5,000 a year, associates $6,000, and bachelor's $7,000. Um, so this is where you estimate the number that you are going to bring on and the number that you are going to be applying for the subsidy for. Um, you have to be paying them the minimum amount at least 
in order to be eligible for those subsidies. Um, I'm going to go and show you the salary sub or, um, All of the gray boxes are working through information. However, you'll see here the number of jobs for which you're requesting salary assistance is a white box. So that will not populate until you click into this salary schedule document. So, for example, we're going to say lead teacher room five. And this position is going to have a bachelor's degree. That's your intended hire. So looking back at the minimum pay rate, it's 1050 an hour. We're going to hire them on November 1st of this year. We're going to pay them $12 an hour. And then the rest auto populates. So you can see since they're paid the minimum amount, which is 1050, they are eligible for the subsidy. And then this is the amount they would receive for this year, the next year, the next year. You would do that for all of the positions that you plan to bring on. And then you'll see here that has added up the, the one position that I've entered there is shown here. And the amount at the bottom is the full subsidy that you would be receiving up until December of 2017. You are required to maintain these positions for the duration of the grant period as well as beyond. You are required to continue paying the minimum amount at least beyond the grant period. And you are able to, if there are staff changes, you're able to um, replace that individual with someone of equal qualification and still continue to receive the subsidy. Um, they are based on actual paid amounts, the subsidy is, and they're reimbursed on a quarterly basis. So pay stubs are required for documentation purposes. Um, so we would also need to be seeing a proof of their qualification, so that's required as well. Moving on to the next section, Form 4 is required for all applicants. Um, and this is where you really get a chance to explain the reason for applying for this grant and the vision that you have for your child care um, center. Um, this is where you explain all aspects of the project, the activities to be undertaken, the need for those activities, the need for the equipment, and you really need to focus on detail and clarity here as well. Moving on. And you can see there's a large space there to lay out your plan, but if you do require more space, put an X in this box and you can attach the page directly behind when you print the form. And please have that typed. Um, where the project will take place is the physical address of the center that you will be imp implementing these funds, um, just the physical address so that we can be sure to find it easily. The timetable for the project, the more information, the better. Um, please include when you plan to purchase the equipment, when you plan to have it installed, when you plan to interview and hire applicants, any timetable that is relevant to what you're applying for, please be sure to include all of those dates in that box. Um, the name of the individuals implementing the project would be the person who is purchasing and installing the equipment, the person doing the interviewing and hiring. Um, this is where this section is where you're going to explain the background and credentials of the group responsible for operating the facility. Um, we really would like to know the qualifications of the individual, clearly demonstrate the capability of operating a child care facility, and really any information to give us a good picture of who is going to be um, in charge of implementing our funding. And please explain how you intend to become or retain, retain in this case, a three-star quality rated child care program. Um, we want to be sure that the children are receiving the highest quality care 
and we need to be sure that you all are all on the same page. Um, the quality care extends beyond the classroom, so this is where you are going to um, expand a little bit on how you plan to incorporate community involvement, um, volunteer initiatives, anything outside of the normal day-to-day -day activities that you plan to do with this funding or at your facility. Um, and as I mentioned before, you are required to serve those receiving a CAP subsidy. We really want to be sure that these high-needs children are served. Um, so this is where you can explain how you intend to do so. And as Laura mentioned, we are um, looking to maximize our funding. Um, so $100,000 is, is the limit that we have um, set. However, if there are circumstances that would require you to go over that $100,000 limit, please explain here and also be sure to include a prioritized list or schedule of cost estimates um, in this box. And if you need additional space, again, you can put an X in this box and then add that information following this page. Um, so now I'm going to go over to the budget. And this is where you are going to explain all of the funding that is going towards your project. Um, I did not enter the equipment cost as we are going through. Um, I'll go back and show you where those are entered. Um, so on the equipment page, um, we'll say that we are purchasing $80,000, but requesting funding in $50,000. So if you go back over to the budget, that has been added in. And you can also see that the salary subsidy has been added in from the salary schedule. This is where you get to enter your other funding sources. So conventional financing would be a loan from a bank or credit union. You would need to put those totals here and also include a letter of commitment um, guaranteeing that they are going to be putting that financing in. So you can include that or you would need to include that with your application. Equity is the amount that the owner is planning on putting into this project, and you would also need a letter documenting that amount. Um, other is any other source of funding. So if you have a friend who's putting in a bunch of money, then you can just add that there. And again, documentation is required, and you need a letter stating that they plan to um, put that financing in. And if you did select others, this space down here is where you can explain that funding source, um, who it's coming from, and um, if you need additional space, then you're welcome to add a page as well. So going back from the budget, the very last page of the application is a checklist. As you can see, there are X's in these spaces, and there are no gray boxes, so it pre-populates as well. Um, the only ones that have not checked off, as you'll see, are letter of commitment of funding. Um, so this is the letter from the bank, from the owner, and from the additional funding sources. And then if you have any other questions, feel free to reach out to me, but you're going to need to print three copies and the original and mail it to this address. Um, and if you have any other questions, then please feel free to reach out. I think now we're going to be taking some questions um, that we've been receiving throughout the webinar. So um, at this time, we're going to be going over those. Thank you. Hello again, this is Laura Wagner. Um, I just wanted to address two questions that have come in um, and also want to welcome again um, any remaining questions that may um, be relevant for this um, grant opportunity. Um, so first question, did we say that three-star family providers are not included in this grant opportunity? Um, at this time, we will be funding uh, intending to 
um, qualify as child care learning centers. Um, that is the um, plan for, for this iteration of our child care expansion grant. Um, and our second question um, was related to, this is for centers only um, and for this being three-star providers. Um, again, this decision was made um, related to um, the intent of dramatically expanding access to, um, to child care um, slots in these areas of, of great need. Um, so at this time, our intent is to fund child care learning centers. All right, if there are no other questions at this time, um, I will just say on, on behalf of um, the Department of Early Care and Learning and the Department of Community Affairs, thank you so very much for joining us this morning for this webinar on our